All right, so for the first time ever, instead of doing a replay, we're actually going to try some live duels. Uh, here's my hand. It doesn't look too bad, honestly. Uh, we did win the coin flip, so we're going to go first. Uh, we've got Legendary Ocean on board and Reasoning. Always activate Reasoning first because we want our opponent to guess randomly rather than guess level 5 to stop Kairu Shin. Uh, we'll see what they guess. Level 1, perfect. We're gonna, No matter what happens, we're going to summon a monster here. So we're going to get that in Graveyard, evenly matched. Of course, we have 8 million cards that are going to get milled, but it doesn't matter. All right, we got Kairu Shin. Super awesome. We've got Kairu Shin, uh, Legendary Ocean, Foolish Burial of Goods. Uh, we can normal summon a second Kairu Shin, which I'm probably going to do. His double Kairu Shin is really broken. Send the Ice Barrier. Activate. Now we're also trying to bait, so Kairu Shin, you know, can do stuff for us, but we're gonna go ahead and, yep, summon the, or send the Kairu Shin and then add it back to hand. Uh, now, what else can we do here? Activate Legendary Ocean. Uh, we're gonna search out Sea Stealth Attack for sure. Um, we could also get Sea Stealth too, but I think Sea Stealth Attack is just better because it'll give us protection and stuff. So we have Sea Stealth, plus we have Kairu Shin's Dark Reef, plus we have Kairu Shin that we're about to normal summon. So now they're double water locked. Um, and obviously they've got the Dark Reef. This this could have played through Ash. This could have played through so much. This is a really good hand. Um, yeah, we're just going to pass to our opponent here. Uh, we're going to turn on the chaining on. Because we want to do this as quick as possible. We don't play any of the normal monsters, so we don't have to worry about this effect of summoning if they have a monster. Um, yeah, so we're going to activate that to send our card to the graveyard. And then if our opponent allows that, then we're going to chain the Sea Stealth attack to get the card out of our graveyard. Which hopefully they don't have a Ghost Bell or something random like that, or like a DD Crow. We do want to activate Umi from the graveyard, because we milled one and we just sent one to the graveyard anyway. So now we've got the Water Lock, and I'm going to go for one Electric Jellyfish. And then yes, we also want a Special Summon. Uh, if we want to win the following turn, we can summon the Mega Fortress Whale, but honestly, I think it's just a safer pick to just pick another Kairu Shin, but like I said, if you want to win, I mean, honestly, we're just going to go with the, the, the Whale, because we already have two Kairu Shins, so I mean, like, unless they have a Lava Golem, we should be good, and then we're going to go ahead and just click on Auto, so now it doesn't bother us too much, uh, but essentially with the board we have right now, anything that threatens... Um, Anything that threatens the Legendary Ocean, we can just stop with Electric Jellyfish. Uh, Kaijus, obviously, are a potential threat, but I mean it's not the end of the world. And the next turn, we can just attack everything with Mega Fortress Whale. So essentially, we're in a we're in a fine place right now. There's some in Ecclesia. Uh, can't even use its effect, or yes, you can. Yeah, because you tribute first, then you special summon. I can actually negate that, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're playing against Sword Soul, which I love the Sword Soul matchup because you're about to see what's going on here. Uh, Moe is a water monster, so he actually can summon Moe, and he can summon the token. But here's the funny thing. Uh, Legendary Ocean reduces the levels of all water monsters on the field, mine and my opponent's by one. So Moe is going to be a level 3 monster, and the tuner is going to be a level 3 monster. So them summoning this is totally irrelevant and isn't going to help them, so they can summon this because I'm... They're playing Sword Soul, and I know they're not playing a level 6 Synchro Monster. Uh, so now, as you can see, their levels are at level 6. None of that is beneficial to them. Again, we only negate something that threatens our existing board with Electric Jellyfish. These are now level 6. What are you going to do with the level 6 monster? Um, yeah, they're now level 3, which me makes a level 6 Synchro. Uh, this is a little bit of a threat because they can go into Baron de Fleur, but um, the fortunate thing is... Uh, he's going to bounce the Electric Jellyfish, okay. That's actually quite smart, which means, tells me he probably has something else, so I'm just going to go ahead and negate that. So if he has, like, Cosmic Cyclone, it's going to suck for us, but it's not the end of the world. Harpy's Feather Duster. Okay, that doesn't even matter, because we're going to Harpy's Feather Duster, we're going to banish the Electric Jellyfish, right? 
Let me do the math here. Yeah, we're going to banish electric jellyfish. And now our spawn trap cards don't get destroyed whatsoever. It's just kind of an animation for nothing. Awesome animation, by the way. I like all the animation they, they have added. Uh, Adhara is going to use that to return the Vishuda, but Vishuda is once per turn, so it doesn't even matter. Again, you can summon one monster that's not water, but that's it. And he is controlling an effect monster, so he can't summon any of the big tenyes out at this point. It was a really uncomfortable situation for him. I don't know what else he's got in his hand, but it's definitely not looking good. I'm going to tribute summon, huh? Into the Vishuda. Interesting. And you can't go into the... Uh, unfortunately, he can't go into the uh, Tenyi Link 1. So he's going to end phase here. Okay, so essentially... Essentially, it's the end of the game. Because we can attack directly. With all of our water monsters, and we have a Gamma Seal. Okay, that's it. Yep, so that's replay. I guess it's not a replay, it's a live play. Number one. As you saw there against a uh, Sword Soul player. Great matchup. One of the best matchups you could possibly want. Uh, because all of their levels are modulated. in, And it's definitely in your favor. Uh, yeah, let's go over to the next game. Alright, so again, we win the coin flip. But, I mean, these things happen. Sometimes you win. Sometimes I'll lose four coin flips in a row. It, it's, you know, it's a 50-50 chance. Nothing you can really do one way or the other. But we're about to level up, which is nice. Uh, and we got, like, a pretty going second hand, which kind of sucks. I do play a lot of core going second cards, like the Kaijus and the Triple Tactics and stuff like that. Uh, so it kind of sucks. And if he imperms us right now, we're, we're in a really bad situation. Um... Yeah, if he imperms, we're, we're off to a not-so-great start. It's going to send this for cost. Imperm would be just devastating right now. Maxi's okay, though. Maxi's going to just... We're going to summon one monster. Maxi's not the end of the world at all. And we get to draw two cards off of Triple Tactics if we want to. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Special Summon this. Uh, now, since he did Maxi us, we can Triple Tactics for either effect. Draw two, or we can look at our opponent's hand and then take one away. I'm just going to go ahead and just draw the two, I think. Let me think. Should I draw two? Yeah, I'm just going to draw two, see what I get. Oh, man, didn't even help. <laughs> All right, so we're going to Legendary Ocean, and then we're going to activate the effect to search. So now our effect, now we have protection from Jellyfish if he had an Ash for some reason. Uh, I think Sea Stealth is probably the best card to activate right now. We could go to Sea Stealth 2, Sea Stealth, and we've got the Kairushin's Dark Reef. Probably Sea Stealth is probably the best. It'll give us protection. Drawing Pot of Extravagance wasn't exactly the best, but nothing we could do about that now. And we're just going to pass here. This this is typically a pretty standard board for this deck. Uh, I'm going to, just so we're ready, he's in standby phase because we don't have an Umi to retrieve out of the graveyard anyway. I'm just going to go ahead and immediately activate this. Um, that way if our opponent has, uh, what Umi would I even activate? Oh yeah, the one I sent to the graveyard, right, right, right. Oh yeah, so I guess I could have left it, but it's, but now if he activates Harpy's Feather Duster, we, we have a way to out it. Let's see, he's going to activate this. This is a little, a little concerning. I don't know what he's going to search, but I'm going to let him search it because I don't know what it is yet. If it's Numerons, it's good for us. If, oh, Pressurized Planet. Okay, so that is a little bit of an issue. We actually can't uh, negate that because, I mean, we can negate the effect, but it's not really going to help. Uh, the problem with Electric Jellyfish is when you negate with Electric Jellyfish, what it does is uh, it, it just negates the effect, not the activation, unfortunately. So it can get a little dangerous for us. But Fenrir... I can deal with. Fenrir is, is a perfectly fine card to deal with when you've got um, a water lock going. So he's going to have to declare an attack, activate the effect, not in damage step. So it's on attack declaration, not in damage step. And then we're going to chain the jellyfish, negate it. And then after the jellyfish effect, we're going to um, see stealth attack to banish the jellyfish. And then he's going to have to either attack Dragon Lord or not attack Dragon Lord, but either way, it doesn't really matter to us. 
And Castillo actually does have water monsters, so that is also a concern, but he didn't search the water monster. Uh, the one that attacks in defense is a water monster. That card's pretty good. Let's see, what is he going to attack? I mean, it, does, it literally doesn't matter what he attacks. I'm just going to negate it, and then, like I said, I'm going to just... I'm going to... Chaining on. Yep, he's going to activate the effect. I'm going to respond with my own effect. Target the... Yep, that's a smart thing to do. I'm going to chain the electric jellyfish. And then he's going to... He has an opportunity to chain his own thing, and then I'm going to activate sea stealth to banish the jellyfish off the field. So that way, uh, it doesn't get run over by battle. It is going to gain some attack, but it's not enough to deal with the Kashtira Fenrir, so we don't want to do that. And now he can choose to attack again. Uh, it doesn't matter. I love I love how it asks you whether you want to increase the attack, even though the monster's banished. And like that's it's it's such a goofy ruling. So now he's going to attack, and we're going to automatically destroy his monster, hopefully. And that's it. And now he's uh, he's good to go on whatever he wants to do in main phase two. He can summon Unicorn and then search, which is smart, exactly what he should be doing. Uh, like I said, he can also summon the Water one, but we do actually have the Gamma Seal, which is like a really good card against his deck. Uh, we have the Pot of Extravagance. We have the really, really, really good cards in our hand ready to go. We have the General, um, which is going to be a, a Torment next turn. He's going to target a Kashdira, summon a Kashdira, yep, with the Water one, which is the one I said. Uh, and then add a trap, which is again is pretty smart. So he's playing around this all very, very well. Uh, but we do, like I said, we have a half decent hand. We have the gamma seal. We had a very going second hand, which is really kind of, kind of annoying because we we had a very going second hand and we went first, and then our triple tactics got us absolutely nothing useful. Uh, next, didn't didn't get our the legendary ocean. What did he just search? Which trap card? I said it's multiple anyway. Big bang. Uh, two or more banished face. Okay, okay. And then we're gonna get our our boy back, the jellyfish. Okay. So now, right off the bat, first thing, first things first, as always, activate pot of extravagance. Obviously, the extra deck almost never matters anymore in this particular build of the deck. So I'm gonna draw two cards. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, Fish Sonar is pretty good. We're going to go ahead and activate this, sending from our deck. He's going to max C, which is pretty smart. I should have Kaiju'd first, but I mean, who would have saw that coming? Actually, I am going to I'm going to activate the Electric Jellyfish because I'm not trying to deal with that. And then we'll see what he has available to him. But our hand is looking pretty full right now. So we're going to negate the max C. Yes, we're going to increase the attack as we will need the attack strength. And then we're going to summon... Honestly, if we summon this and attack directly, it's pretty much over. As we... Yeah, we summon this, attack directly. He hasn't paid any life points yet, actually. So it's not even going to help that much. So we're going to go ahead and General Rulo is pretty good too. We're going to go with him. So now if he activates any monster effects, it, it hurts him. And we still have a normal summon either. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> he activates a monster effect like immediately. And another monster effect that he's going to have to discard, I imagine now. To resolve his monster effects. So not only did he not resolve the maxi, but now he's going to have to discard every single time. It's like a reverse maxi. It's actually kind of nice. And then we've got, of course, the fish sonar, which means we can search another copy of Kairushin momentarily. So he's going to keep sending to the graveyard. This is a really awesome situation for us. Uh, none of these cards really matter. I don't know what he's going to banish, and it really doesn't matter what he banishes. Uh, Ice Barrier is the smartest card to banish. Uh, we'll see if he's smart enough to do it, but it literally doesn't matter what he banishes. Um, and then he's going to have to, yeah, every single time with, uh, he banished the Triple Tactics, and his monster was negated anyway. All right, uh, good stuff. Now we're going to activate the Fish Sonar.
to get another another Kairu Shin here. And we haven't normal summoned yet, so we're gonna go ahead and normal summon that. And then we're going to activate this Kairu Shin to search for a card. Uh, at this point, we don't have Sea Stealth 2, so we might as well put it into play. Uh, it sucks that this effect you have to activate. Um, the, the, the effect to have all water monsters attack is a non-quick effect, so you have to activate it like in main phase, which kind of sucks uh, because I would have activated that, but general rule it was just overall it's better for the grind game. Uh, I don't even need the Gamma Seal yet, so I'm just going to save the Gamma Seal. Uh, this, both of these use their effects. They're kind of toast right now. They're not doing anything. Uh, we're going to activate the effect of Sea Stealth 2 to get our Mega Fortress Whale onto the field here. Because we want it out in play. So during our opponent's battle phase, we can destroy a card when they enter the battle phase. Uh, yeah, so let's go and start attacking now. Yep, and he's going to scoop it up. Nice, awesome. Uh, yeah, it was basically toast for him there. There's nothing he could really do. And we had the follow-up, which was the Kaiju anytime we wanted. Uh, so even if even if they did go first, we would have had... Um, and they made a Rise Heart, which I guess a lot of decks is really good. Uh, that was actually a very going second hand, and we happened to squeeze the win out of that one. So another win there. Let's see if we can get a couple more games uh, uh, going here. Guess we won the coin flip again. Nothing I can do about that. Now, obviously, there are bad matchups, like a ton of them, but we'll see how this goes. We do keep winning the coin flip, which is nice. Our hand is, like, super sick, uh, as always. Look, the deck is... Its biggest issue is bricking. As long as you don't brick, you essentially will always win. Going first, going second, it doesn't really matter. Uh, activate reasoning, wait for our opponent to guess something. Always activate reasoning first because your opponent doesn't know what you're playing. They're just going to guess something stupid like level 1. Uh, and then we get a free electric jellyfish because they have no idea what to guess. Um, so we're going to activate electric jellyfish, send an Umi to the graveyard, and then we're going to special summon the Kairu Shin out. And actually that was a misplay. We should have activated this first because uh, we'll see if our opponent ashes. They don't have any hand traps by the by the looks of it. We're going to activate the Legendary Ocean, buff everything, activate the Kairu Shin, hopefully the effect value, they don't. Um, let's see here. Smartest thing to probably activate right now, and they scoop. Alright, good enough, good enough. I, I'm not going to complain. Good enough. Let me go see what they're playing. Oh, actually I can't because it's Duelist Cup. Are you All right, so we finally lost the coin flip. We'll see how this goes. Our opponent's choosing. Uh, more than likely, yep, we're going second. We'll see if we get a nice going second hand. We do play evenly matched, triple tactic talents. We play Kairu Shin, which in itself is like a going second card. Uh, we play a few different cards. We got evenly matched in our opening hand. It's a really good opening hand. This is a good. This is a this is a solid opening hand. We have most of what we need um, to successfully break a board here. Assuming they don't put like five negates on the board or something like that. But the good thing about Master Duel is their ban lists are very cohesive. Or, or I should say uh, comprehensive. So they don't make like really, really big multi-negate board. Uh, by the looks of it, he's playing Sword Soul here. Which is absolutely fine by me because Sword Soul is a decent matchup against this deck. In addition to that, evenly matched will bait out the Baron de Fleur. And then once Baron de Fleur has been baited out, uh, we can... You can do our thing afterwards. But more than likely, we're going to see a Baron de Fleur hit the field here. A Baron de Fleur I guess, is a tough card to deal with, but it's not the end of the world. I'll deal with a Baron de Fleur. It would be nice if he kind of bricked and he's going to use the Ashuna right away, but his hand seems pretty decent. He's got, yeah, the Vessel. He's got, he's got a lot going on right now. This is a weird play line, I gotta I gotta admit. I've never seen he sent Taya to the graveyard. Maybe he's got the Sword Soul Master Reborn card. Uh, but it's a very weird play line. And a lot of Sword Soul players have actually cut Vessel of the Dragon Cycle, so it's you know it's interesting to even see it being played in the deck. It is a good card though. It is a very good card. Um, 
We've got the Adhara. He's going to special summon that. Again, interesting play lines here. Moyi. This guy opened everything. He's the GOAT. He's got the Pot of Greed. He opened everything. Uh, he might even have hand traps. That's how that's how incredible his hand is. And then of course he's gonna mow he's gonna have to have, reveal one more card. So essentially we know all of his cards except for one. Uh, he's got the Vishuda, he's got Moe, he's got Adhara, he's got Monk. We know everything except for a single card, which could be just about anything. But he did send the Taya to the graveyard, so I don't know if, what that means for us. He's gonna summon is that Chao Fang? Search a Sword Soul card, and he's going to draw a card, which will leave two cards in his hand that we don't know. And he's going to search one more, which is probably going to be the Trap card that pops cards. Which is the Blackout. Unless he's going to search the Monster Reborn and then make another one. He could do that too, and it's possible. And we still got to figure out what's going on with these two Tenyis on the field. Blackout, unsurprising. We saw that coming. Add one sword soul, yep. And then he's gonna. Uh, yep, that's good. Baron de Fleur, probably right around now. Baron de Fleur, or the level 10 that protects itself and banishes and then banishes a card. That card's also really good. Honestly, that, one, that level 10 would probably be worse for us to deal with than the. than Baron de Fleur. Baron de Fleur is one negate. And we just evenly matched and baited out. What in the world is this? <laughs> he got me here. All right, quick effect. You guys face it once. Wow, that's pretty good. Now you can make another level eight right here. Maybe ten you the berserker. This card's pretty good. Now it says here. I, I almost got scared here because it says quick effect. Activate this effect. Your opponent uh, and cards you control will be destroyed. Uh, or banished by your opponent's card effect, but from what I understand evenly matched he has to banish his own cards, so I'm fairly certain That our cards don't even This doesn't even affect evenly matched as far as I know, but I, I what do I know, right? We'll see we'll see the interaction between this and evenly matched. It's actually quite interesting man. This guy's really going off. Kind of impressive, gotta say. He's playing some interesting cards. This Ice Jade Singer Monster is actually like kind of good, honestly. I've never seen anybody summon it, but it's honestly pretty good. Make another, another level eight here. T Draco Tenu the Berserker. That's a reasonable one. Now, fortunately, this board is outed by Kairu Shin. So we're going to definitely evenly match Kairu and then Kairu Shin. And Kairu Shin is a continuous effect. So even though he's got the Grandmaster here, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is Blackout and he's probably got some hand traps in hand. Yeah, he's got a decent board. A double evenly matched. Okay, so we'll see how this... Let me read this one more time. Quick effect, you can activate this effect. Cannot be banished by your opponent's card effects this turn. Okay. Okay. So a battle phase. And a battle phase. Evenly matched. We'll see. We'll see how he responds to this. We open two evenly matched, which isn't good for us. And I, I'm actually curious, like I said, about how this effect resolves. So you, whether I win or lose this is a great learning lesson for me. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how this resolves. If he actually has to banish cards, because it is him banishing. Even though it is my effect. So that's actually an interesting ruling. I'm very, like I said, I'm very, very curious about this. It could just be a link. He just, could just be doing it just as a lingering effect, which is a smart thing to do. Again, it's a lingering effect. Why not? Yep, still has to banish. <laughs> Great. And he left uh, Sword So Shao, uh, Shi Shao on the board. So let's see if he has an Ash here. Because if he has an Ash, that is not good for us. No, he doesn't have an ash. Okay. He does not have an ash. So we're going to go ahead and get the Dragon Lord in play. And things are looking pretty good for us right now. I'm not going to lie. Uh, normal summon. Kairu Shin. Obviously, he doesn't have anything else to like wreck his board with here. Uh, 
literally doesn't matter though. And we can't destroy his monster, but I mean, we lost our battle phase. We weren't going to destroy his monster anyway. This isn't a permanent negate, right? Quick effect, uh, blah, 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 negate its effects until the end of the turn. Okay. It's not a permanent negate. It's still a good card though. And then we're going to activate to search. He's going to go ahead and banish in order to... Um, He's going to banish in order to negate our monster, but we have to bait it. We had no choice. And he got rid of a Vashuda. That's a great, that's a great bait. I'm perfectly comfortable with that. That was good. This is so, you, you couldn't find anything better to like, anything worse than here? Nothing? I mean, come on. You, you couldn't banish this at least? Uh, yeah, now we just set three pass. We'll leave the evenly matched just in case he clears our board. I don't think he's going to go off too much with... I don't think you can go off that much with with what he has here. Because he would have already ashed us if he had something good. I don't think he's going to be able to like clear our board that much and then evenly match. I'm just going to set the evenly match, honestly. Um, yeah, we're going to turn Shaining on and we're going to go to end phase here. And now we're going to activate the Kyrushin's Dark Reef ASAP. As soon as we can, standby phase, draw phase, whatever we can. Yep, draw phase. We're going to activate the Kyrushin's Dark Reef. Hopefully he didn't draw an Ash Blossom for turn. Um, because if he ashes this, it's going to basically leave just a... He drew, the ash for turn. <laughs> he drew the ash for turn. That sucks for us, but it's not the end of the world because uh, we always persist no matter what. Wow, that was a really, really good draw off the top. Sea Stealth, yes, we want to activate Umi. We're waterlocked, but it literally doesn't matter because we're always waterlocked. Our whole deck is water, and uh, now we can go to auto. Just wait for our opponent to do something. Uh, obviously, they're going to have to probably use the Shi Xiao here. He's going to go to battle phase. Why would he go to battle phase? See, this is a massive problem on Master Duels. People don't read anything. <laughs> he just, why'd he waste his battle phase? What was that all about? Wow. Maybe he just doesn't have anything good in his hand. That's it. Uh, Alright, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, maybe he just didn't draw anything useful. I mean, you know, he drew Ash. Incredible, right? It's like dueling, dueling the Pharaoh. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and reasoning here because now he knows what we're playing. Now, if he's smart, he called five, but we'll see what he called. He probably could have baited out. Uh, well, that wouldn't matter anyway. Level three. Mad random. I don't think we play any level threes, so completely beneficial for us perfect thank you now we can negate she shall if we want to <laughs> all right that's great so now if he activates she shall we'll negate it we're going to go ahead and activate the dragon lord and if he tries to negate it again we have the jellyfish now so not only will we be able to negate it uh effect valor mad random all right do we negate this yeah why not right and then if he activates she shall that's fine it literally is fine it's fine. It doesn't even matter. I'll just... It's fine. I'll bait out the negates. It doesn't affect us negatively. Go ahead. By all means, go ahead. Like I said, because these are all, like, negates that really just stop things for a turn. So it, it doesn't even matter. Go ahead, please. By all means. Uh, now, if I wanted to... Uh, this does target, right? Target won't other effect monster. If I wanted this to resolve really, really, really badly, uh, what I can do is just use C Stealth and then banish this off the board. Um, and does this summon a token when this gets banished? No, right? No. So, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and activate the C Stealth, uh, banishing the Jellyfish. So now he has no target for the She Shao, and our Jellyfish will resolve. He has no target. Jellyfish resolves. Effect Veiler is negated. And he scoops it up. Um, yeah, that should wrap it up there. Yeah, so that was going second. Built a pretty formidable board, like a really pretty good Sword Soul board. I think that's the last gameplay that we should probably do. I don't know, that's four in a row. I don't really need to do much else. I mean, we could go for five, but it's all right. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, end it here, show the deck, and, and, and wrap it up. All right, so this is the deck I just used here. Uh, we've got, uh, this is the full list. This is what it looks like here. I'm going to go through it one by, you know, card by card. Um... 
yeah, the whole point of this deck essentially is uh, going second, going first, doesn't really matter. Um, we basically cut the deck in a, in, in, in a certain way. We want to use our reasonings. Uh, I was even thinking about playing Monster Gate possibly because Monster Gate is a very, very strong card too. Uh, but basically, you play Reasoning, uh, you hope to mill the Ice Barrier, um, you activate Reasoning as soon as you draw it because your opponent doesn't know what you're playing, and all of our levels are totally, totally weird. Uh, sometimes they'll call four, in which case they'll, they'll get a Jellyfish, but most of the time your opponent's going to call like one or two or three. Uh, once in a while they call four and get Jellyfish right, but most of the time no one ever calls five, like ever. Uh, so that's kind of the point of the deck. Then we've got things like Triple Tactics, Talents, Evenly Matched, stuff like that. We're not playing the traditional um, Hand Trap Package. And the reason you don't want to play the traditional Hand Trap Package is because Hand Traps are actually not that useful in this deck. Because the fortunate thing about this deck is that Call by the Grave does nothing against this deck. Uh, so by not playing Called by the Grave... Uh, by not playing any of the hand traps called by the grave is just a totally dead card in their hand um, and that is just a phenomenal strategy for us so now let's go card by card here uh, warrior of atlantis we play one copy of this i used to play ter uh, terraforming instead i actually cut all of the warrior of atlantises uh, but i used to play like i said terraforming but unfortunately terraforming is banned so i have to just include one of these uh three of the jellyfish because it's good it negates plus it summons a monster it's just a really good card as you saw in the replay uh one ice jade tremora this is just another optional card you can send this to the graveyard and special summon a water monster from your hand any water monster you want and this is just another option that you have off of the ice barrier card uh, we've got three copies of kairu shin uh, this is the heart and soul of the deck it is the best card in the deck uh, basically if Umi's on the field, uh, your opponent can, control, can only control one monster that is not water. That's a continuous effect. As soon as it hits the field, your opponent has to get rid of all of its cards that aren't um, water monsters, except for one. So they basically can keep like one dark monster or, or, you know, one fire monster. Just one of a monster, one of an attribute outside of water. Uh, and then it has a second effect where it can search any card that says Sea Stealth, uh, Kairu Shin, or Umi, um, which again is really, really good uh, because it searches the entire archetype we play one general raiho uh, this is an ice barrier card which traditionally sucks but it's actually a really good card in this deck because it's just a free monster that you can add to your hand off of ice barrier and you can summon for free off of either reasoning or the jellyfish basically as you saw in the replay when your opponent activates a monster effect they have to discard a card in order to use it or their effect is negated so if they have no cards in hand they can't use any of their card effects or they just have to go continuously minus it's like reverse maxi um, mega fortress whale is good for otk because you can um during your opponent's battle phase it lets you uh pop a card like it started battle phase but during your turn it allows you to activate its effect so all water monsters attack directly and you can essentially end games whenever you want to also it's easy to summon uh gamma seal it's a searchable kaiju you need to play it when you play the pearly matchup or the cashtira matchup uh three copies of reasoning because it's just an insane card in this deck uh no one can ever guess it it's master duel you have the advantage of having this card because you activate it your opponent has no idea what you're playing Unless they have used like triple tactics talents and saw your hand, they more, more than likely have no idea what you're playing. So it's a very, very strong card. And on top of that, it mills things like terror. It mills things like legendary ocean, which is good for us because we can get it back off of sea stealth. It mills things like ice barrier, which lets us search. It mills cards that are just useful in our graveyard. Uh, one foolish burial of goods to send ice barrier. Uh, Two copies of Pot of Extravagance because it's at two, and if it was at three, I'd play three. Three copies of Triple Tactics Talents. Absolutely busted and broken card. Really good card, and I might actually add Triple Tactics Thrust. I'm still thinking about it. Uh, but this card's really good, uh, especially going second. This deck has trouble playing through one hand trap. Uh, but the, this deck is a, a little bit of a weird situation where uh, sometimes you get ha one hand trap and you can't play. But... It doesn't really matter if you get hand trapped once because if you activate triple tactics and then just draw two cards, then you can just like keep playing. As long as you can basically get to Kairu Shin plus a plus Legendary Ocean or uh, Sea Stealth Stealth too. As long as you can get to Umi plus Kairu Shin, you can essentially beat just about anybody in the world. Uh, but yeah, this is just very useful. Uh, one pot of prosperity again i'd play three if i could but i can't it's limited to one three fish sonar it's the search spell for the deck uh, you can search any monster that has umi in its name uh, which is good kairushin and and friends three legendary oceans 
uh, two Sea Stealth attacks. Sea Stealth 2, this is basically, um, it's a pretty good card. It basically counts as Umi on the field and in the graveyard, so you can s activate it back from the graveyard with Sea Stealth. But it also lets you summon a water during the start of the uh, water monster during the start of the battle phase, or monster names Umi in its name at the start of the battle phase. And it protects your water monsters from targeting uh, by your opponent's monsters, which is pretty good. Three copies of Ice Barrier. Uh, this card's graveyard effect is insane, which is why we go through all of these hoops to put in the graveyard in the first place. Uh, basically, what this card does is when it's in the graveyard, you can banish it during either player's turn, and then you can send a level five or higher water monster to the graveyard, and then you can add any water monster from your graveyard back to your hand, and it's all one effect, so they can't even call by the grave this effect. Uh, so basically, you can just send, like, for example, you can send, like, Kairu Shin, and then you can add back uh, the Jellyfish. You can send Kairu Shin and then add back... Uh, whatever you want you can send any gamma seal to the graveyard and then add back kairu shin like it doesn't matter you can send anything you want and then add back anything you want you can even add back the card you send which is really good and then it has another effect which is when your opponent declares an attack you can change that monster's attack to zero and negate its effects and that is a totally permanent effect uh, it's negated forever and its attack is zero forever which both are very good and they can't change battle position which I never even knew that until I just read that uh, but that effect is also really good because sometimes you just have like a Kairu Shin plus Legendary Ocean and it's not enough and your opponent will like normal summon or like special summon a big monster like one big Kashdira monster you can Ice Barrier uh, and this completely plays around Kashdira or Fenrir because as soon as they activate their effect to banish on attack declaration you chain this negate the Kashdira or Fenrir they can't banish your card and the attack's still going to go through so the cash tier offender is going to get destroyed uh by the um kairu shin awesome interaction and three copies of evenly matched again we're not playing any hand traps we'll let our opponent build a board and we just evenly match them um going first obviously this card's not that good but sometimes you lose coin flips and you have to be prepared for it uh one copy of infinite impermanence just because i had an extra slot uh, and this is a hand trap that is slightly different from the others. You can't call by the grave this hand trap, so it still uh, fits our motif. And then we play Kairu Shin's Dark Reef, just one. It's searchable and it's very good. Uh, this card is only good when uh, when you have multiple ways to get to... Basically, this card is only good if you already have Legendary Ocean and Sea Stealth face down. Or you have multiple versions of Legendary Ocean, like Sea Stealth 2 and then, and then and Legendary Ocean. But in this particular build, this card's not very good because we're not playing the Maiden. Uh, then we got three copies of Sea Stealth, protects your monsters, and start of the damage step, yeah, destroys automatically, and then it protects your back row. Really good. It protects your monsters and protects your back row. And then for the extra deck, uh, this is all random. You don't have to play this stuff specifically. Play two Natish just in place in case they make us send from our extra deck. Uh, one Attic Nister, one Bahamut Shark. Abyss Dweller. Honestly, I haven't even touched this extra deck other than the Stealth Crack, and I really didn't make anything. Uh, Miss Starboy, Coral, and Anatomy. Uh, this card I actually make sometimes to add back a water. You can uh, you can special summon back uh, the Jellyfish, but I I literally don't go into the extra deck with this build whatsoever. You almost never use the extra deck except for like I said the the Kraken. Sometimes you can summon, but other than that, you almost never go into the extra deck. Water Charmer, uh, Fergie. Unicorn, Underworld Goddess is sometimes important if you're playing against the... This is probably the only card that's like pretty important in your extra deck because um, it can help out the pearly board if you just have no access to your kaiju. Uh, but most of the time you have access to your kaiju. Between the reasonings and the and the ice barriers and all of these other cards, you have access to the kaiju most of the time. Uh, so you can still beat pearly pretty easily. But that is the... The end of that deck profile. Thank you for watching. If there's anything you want to see in particular, let me know. And again, have a great day, guys. La, 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 la.